Hello everyone, you're very welcome back to the channel. Today, we're going to be answering the question, what is the best S&P 500 ETF for European investors? We're going to be comparing S&P 500 ETFs that are offered by four of the most popular ETF providers in Europe, Vanguard, iShares, X-Trackers, and Invesco. For each ETF, I'll highlight the ETF's total expense ratio, the structure of the ETF, the ETF's dividend status, and the European brokerage platform that the ETF is available on. If after watching this video, you want to get started investing in S&P 500 ETFs, but you don't have a brokerage account, you can try out brokers like the Giro, Book Zero, Trade Republic, or Trading 2 and 2 using the links in the video description. If you want to learn which of these brokers is the best for European investors, check out the video popping up on screen after this one. Let's kick things off with Vanguard. The first Vanguard S&P 500 ETF I want to look at is the Vanguard S&P 500 USITS ETF, ticker symbol VUSA. I just want to mention that the unfortunate reality of ETF investing in Europe is that one ETF can have many different ticker symbols depending on what stock exchange the ETF is trading on. That's why you're much better off searching for an ETF using its ISIN or International Securities Identification Number. While an ETF might have multiple ticker symbols, it will only have one ISIN. So if you're searching for any of the ETFs mentioned in this video, don't search for the ticker symbol, search for the ISIN. I'll leave all the ISINs in the video description. The ISIN for this ETF is IE00B3XX or P09. This ETF is one of the most popular S&P 500 ETFs among retail investors in Europe. In fact, the Giro, Book Zero, and Trading 212 all report that this ETF is among the most popular of all ETFs. ETFs available on their respective platforms. The ETF charges a total expense ratio of 0.07% or 7 basis points. That means for every 1,000 euro invested into this ETF, 70 cents will go to fees. The total expense ratio of an ETF is effectively the yearly cost of owning the ETF, beyond the cost of making the ETF investment in the first place. The higher the cost, the greater the impact on investment returns. So ideally, we want our total expense ratios to be as low as possible. The ETF is structured as a physical ETF. That means the ETF actually owns the investments which it is providing its investors exposure to, which is a good thing. The opposite to a physical ETF is a synthetic ETF, which we'll cover later on. VUSA is a distributing ETF. Because the ETF itself owns shares in the top 500 companies in the United States, it will inevitably receive dividends from some of those companies. A distributing ETF will pass on those dividends to the ETF shareholders by way of a cash dividend. If you invest in VUSA, you'll receive this dividend on a quarterly basis, i.e. once every three months. The biggest downside of distributing ETFs is the fact that you'll have to pay tax on the dividends that you receive. How much tax you pay will depend on the tax rules of your country, but generally speaking, most investors will be looking to minimize their tax bills insofar as possible. Depending on your circumstances, distributing ETFs might not be the best option, specifically from a tax perspective. VUSA is available on all major brokerage platforms, including the Giro, Book Zero, Trade Republic, and Trading 212. Next up from Vanguard is the Vanguard S&P 500 USITS ETF USD Accumulating, ticker symbol VUAA. The ISIN for this ETF is IE00BFMXXD54. The only only difference between VUAA and VUSA is the fact that VUAA is an accumulating ETF. The total expense ratio is the same at 0.07%, the ETF is structured as a physical ETF, and the ETF is available on all major brokerage platforms. So what is an accumulating ETF? Well, unlike a distributing ETF, which passes on the dividends it receives to the ETF shareholders via a cash dividend, an accumulating ETF will reinvest the dividends it receives by buying more shares in the companies that it already owns. This results in the ETF having a higher net asset value, which in turn results in a higher share price for shareholders. The biggest benefit of accumulating ETFs is that because you're not receiving a cash dividend, it's not counted as income, and therefore you don't have to pay tax. Now that might differ slightly from country to country, but in Ireland, ETF investors don't pay tax on dividends that are automatically reinvested by accumulating 
ETFs. So if you're looking to minimize your tax bill, VUAA might be a better option than VUSA. Moving on to iShares. iShares has three S&P 500 ETFs that are of particular interest to investors. The first of which is the iShares Core S&P 500 Usage ETF Accumulating, ticker symbol SX or 8. The ISIN for this ETF is IE 0 b 5 bm or 87 According to Just ETF, this ETF is the largest S&P 500 ETF in Europe, with almost double the amount of assets as compared to VUSA. The ETF has a total expense ratio of 0.07%, which is the same as both VUSA and VUAA. The ETF is structured as a physical ETF, and as the name of the ETF suggests, it is an accumulating ETF. If we were to compare SX or 8 with VUAA, the biggest difference would be the size of the ETFs, with the former being significantly larger than the latter. SX or 8 is available on all major brokerage platforms. The second iShares ETF to consider is the iShares Core S&P 500 Usage ETF USD Distributing, ticker symbol IUSA. The ISIN for this ETF is IE00314420068. Once again, the only difference between IUSA and SX or 8 is the fact that IUSA is a distributing ETF. The ETF pays out a cash dividend on a quarterly basis, i.e. once every three months, which is the same frequency as VUSA. The expense ratio is 0.07%, the ETF is structured as a physical ETF, and the ETF is available on all major brokerage platforms. The final iShares ETF to consider is the iShares S&P 500 Euro Hedged Usage ETF Accumulating, ticker symbol IUSE. The ISIN for this ETF is IE 0 b 3 z w 0 k 18 The biggest difference between this ETF and the two other iShares ETFs is that this ETF is Euro hedged. When you invest in an S&P 500 ETF as a European investor who uses the Euro, you're exposed to currency risk. You're using Euros to buy shares in an ETF whose assets are denominated in dollars. As a result, your investment return is not only influenced by the performance of the assets which the ETF owns, but it's also influenced by the changes in value between the Euro and the US dollar. Think about it like this. An S&P 500 index fund, which owns investments that are denoted in dollars, might increase in value by 10% over the course of a year. But if in that same year, the dollar falls in value by 10% relative to the Euro, then your actual return is 0%. They cancel each other out. Likewise, if the dollar increases in value by 10% relative to the Euro, then your actual return is 20%. Many investors fail to account for this when investing in the US stock market. This doesn't just apply to the Euro. If you're from the UK, you'd be using pounds to buy shares in an ETF whose assets are denominated in dollars. Therefore, your returns will be influenced by the changes in value between the pound and the US dollar. The only way to prevent this from happening is by investing in what's known as a hedged share class. If you use the euro, you'd buy a euro hedged share class. If you use the pound, you'd buy a GBP hedged share class. IUSC is a euro hedged S&P 500 ETF. The fund uses what's known as forward currency contracts to eliminate the impact of changes in value between the euro and the US dollar insofar as possible. This means that in theory, if your shares increased in value by 10% during the year, but the dollar decreased in value by 10% relative to the euro, your return would still be 10%. However, this does come at a cost. IUSC has a total expense ratio of 0.2%, which is higher than unhedged share classes. So for every 1,000 euro invested in this fund, two euro would go to fees. Similar to IUSA, IUSE is an accumulating ETF. It's structured as a physical ETF, and it is available on most major brokerage platforms, though I couldn't see it on book zero when I checked. This begs the question, is the higher total expense ratio of 0.2% worthwhile? That entirely depends on your perspective. For me, I'm investing in the S&P 500 because I want exposure to the stock performance of North America's biggest companies. I'm not investing in the S&P 500 to get exposure to the dollar, and for that reason, a Euro hedge share class suits me best. But there are counter arguments to that perspective. Number one, you could argue that exposure to the dollar further diversifies your portfolio, especially if you have major holdings in a European 
mean index fund ETF. Number two, yes, you're protecting yourself from downside currency risk, but you're also cutting yourself off from any positive returns that may come from changes in the value of the US dollar relative to the euro. And number three, hedge share classes are susceptible to interest rate risk. Changing interest rates for each respective currency directly impacts the return of the ETF shareholders. Hence why hedge share classes can deliver better or worse returns than unhedge share classes. Point being, before you invest in an S&P 500 ETF, consider whether or not you want your returns to be influenced by the performance of the US dollar relative to your home currency. Next up is X Trackers. X Trackers has four S&P 500 ETFs that I want to discuss. The first is the X Trackers S&P 500 Usage ETF 4C, ticker symbol XDPU. The ISIN for this ETF is IE 000Z9SJA06. The most notable feature of XDPU is its total expense ratio of 0.06% or six basis points. That's one basis point lower than the equivalent funds offered by both Vanguard and iShares. The ETF is an accumulating ETF and it's structured as a physical ETF. XDPU is available on DeGiro and Trade Republic. However, I couldn't find it on either Book Zero or Trading 212, which would lead me to believe that it's not as common as the ETFs offered by Vanguard and iShares. The second and third X Tracker ETFs are the S&P 500 Usage ETF 1C Euro Hedged and the S&P 500 Usage ETF 1D Euro Hedged, ticker symbols XDPE and XDPD respectively. The ISINs for these ETFs are IE00BM67HW99 and IE00BGJWX091 respectively. The only difference between these ETFs is that XDPE is an accumulating Euro hedge share class while XDPD is a distributing Euro hedge share class. Both ETFs have a total expense ratio of 0.2% which is the same as the Euro hedged ETF offered by iShares. However, to my knowledge, iShares doesn't have an S&P 500 Euro hedged ETF which is also a distributing ETF and for that reason XDPD could be a better option for investors who want cash dividends coupled with protection from foreign currency risk. Both XDPE and XDPD are structured as physical ETFs. When it comes to availability on brokerage platforms it seems to vary. XDPE, the accumulating fund, is available on DeGiro, Trade Republic and Trading212 but not on Book Zero. XDPD, the distributing fund, is only available on Trade Republic. That's out of the four brokerage platforms that I use. The final X Tracker ETF that I want to mention is the X Trackers S&P 500 Usage ETF 2C GBP Hedge, ticker symbol XDPG. The ISIN for this ETF is IE00BM67HX07. This ETF is for my UK investors who want to hedge their currency exposure to the US dollar. The total expense ratio of this ETF is 0.09%, which is significantly cheaper than the 0.2% total expense ratio that Euro investors have to pay to hedge their currency risk. The ETF is accumulating, structured as a physical ETF, and is available on DeGiro, Trade Republic, and Trading212. But once again, Book Zero does not offer this ETF. Lastly, we have Invesco. Invesco offers two S&P 500 ETFs that are different to all of the other S&P 500 ETFs that we've talked about thus far. The first is the Invesco S&P 500 Usage ETF, ticker symbol SPXS. The ISIN for this ETF is IE00B3YCGJ38. Now, if you look up this ETF, you'll quickly discover that it has a total expense ratio of 0.05% or five basis points. That total expense ratio would make it the cheapest S&P 500 ETF on this list. However, there's a catch. This ETF isn't structured as a physical ETF. This ETF is structured as a synthetic ETF. Synthetic ETFs use financial contracts known as swaps to artificially provide exposure to assets without owning the assets directly. So with the Invesco fund, the ETF doesn't own the S&P 500 stocks directly. It uses swaps to provide artificial exposure to the S&P 500. Synthetic ETFs expose investors to what's known as counter 
third-party risk. And for that reason, physical ETFs are typically preferred. However, that's not all. There is a cost associated with the swap contracts that the ETF uses to provide artificial exposure. In the case of SPXS, that cost is 0.04%. So while the total expense ratio on paper might be 0.05%, you're also paying another 0.04% for the cost of the swaps. This makes the Invesco ETF the most expensive non-hedged S&P 500 ETF on this list, even though at first glance, it might appear to be the cheapest. The ETF is an accumulating ETF and it is available on all major brokerage platforms. The other Invesco ETF is the Invesco S&P 500 Usage ETF Distributing, ticker symbol SPXD. The ISIN for this ETF is IE00BYML9W36. The only difference between SPXD and SPXS is that SPXD is a distributing ETF. The total expense ratio is 0.05% with an additional 0.04% for the cost of the swaps. The ETF is structured as a synthetic ETF and is available on DeGiro, Trade Republic and Trading212. So with all of that being said, what is the best S&P 500 ETF for Europeans? It depends on what you're looking for. If you're looking for an accumulating ETF with the lowest total expense ratio, then the X Trackers S&P 500 Usage ETF 4C might be the best play. The expense ratio is 0.06%, which is cheaper than both the Vanguard and iShares alternatives. If you're looking for a distributing ETF, you can't go wrong with either VUSA or IUSA offered by Vanguard and iShares respectively. Both of these ETFs have a total expense ratio of 0.07%. If you're looking for a Euro hedged ETF for protection against the dollar, the best port of call is likely the iShares S&P 500 Euro hedged uses ETF accumulating. It has a total expense ratio of 0.2%, which is the same as the X Trackers equivalent, with the iShares fund being much larger than X Trackers. However, if you're looking for protection against the dollar and a quarterly dividend, then the X Trackers S&P 500 uses ETF 1D Euro hedged is the better call. Again, a total expense ratio of 0.20%. So now that you know the best S&P 500 ETFs for Europeans, you might want to get started with investing. Again, if you don't have a brokerage account or you want to try out a new broker, you can sign up to DeGiro, BookZero, Trader Public, or Trading212 using the links in the video description. Using these links supports me as a creator and lets me know that you found this video to be useful. What S&P 500 ETF do you think is best for European investors? Have I missed any contenders for the number number one spot? If so, let me know in the comments. Before you start investing in ETFs, you should check out this next video, which covers 10 do's and don'ts for ETF investing as a beginner. Thanks very much for watching and I'll see you soon.